I'm here in Trieste in the northeastern corner of Italy. Now it's not on everyone's bucket list when visiting Italy, but should it be? That's what I want to find out. Imposing castles on the sea, Roman ruins in the center of town, and sauerkraut instead of pasta, that's what's in store for me today. But first, coffee. Trieste is the unofficial espresso capital of Europe. It's home to the Mediterranean's biggest coffee port. There are no less than 18 cafes in the city center and endless amounts of coffee varieties. So here you order an espresso for about a euro 30. It packs a pretty strong punch, but it is a good way to start the day which begins on the Piazza Unita d'Italia, the main square in Trieste. It faces the Adriatic Sea and is also where the city hall is located. Tiziana Zamai is my guide in Trieste today. Ciao, Tiziana. Ciao, welcome. Thank you. Where should we start today? Let's go to Roman Theater. All right, the Roman Theater. Mm -hmm. Let's go. We pass by the Piazza della Borsa on our way. It's a potpourri of architectural styles which reflect the diverse history of Trieste over hundreds of years. This is the Roman theater. All roads lead to Rome, but the Romans certainly left traces behind when they came to Trieste. This Roman theater dates back to the first century and could seat up to 6,000 spectators. It's still used today to host special events. There's no escaping the heat in Italy at this time of year. It is quite warm. Is this the best time to come to see ruins like this or even visit Trieste? Uh, in my opinion, the best time to visit Trieste is either in spring or in autumn. But, well, you can visit it uh, in summer or in winter, too. In summer, you have to know that uh, it can be really hot, like today. <laughs> yes, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, what do some people who walk by here, what do they not realize or know about this ruin? They don't know that uh, this Roman theater was uh, discovered only in the 1930s. Uh, because when they built uh, the building in front of it, uh, that uh, should be the uh, seat of the fascist party, Casa del Fascio, today it is the police headquarters, they found uh, the remains of this Roman theater. In 30 degrees Celsius heat, we continue to find more gems tucked away in the city. We're taking a little stroll now through the old town to the Arc of Ricardo. The Arch of Ricardo is a relic of Roman times, but its history is debatable. So, Tiziana, this wasn't a part of the city walls? No, no, probably it was an arch that divided the city into two parts. Okay. Or someone uh, says that uh, it was an arch on the way conducting uh, to the center of the city, to the main square of the city on the top of the hill. So there is a mistake here. They write that this is one of the Roman city's gates. It's not correct. The archaeologists uh, uh, tell us that it's not uh, uh, correct. So, mistake. The old town is also a mix of architectural styles from eclectic to neoclassical. It's just past noon now and the temperature is already above 32 degrees Celsius. Just in time, a city water fountain. Oh well. Uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> have to be quick. Oh, it's nice and cold. We head back down to the city center to the popular Buffet de Pepe restaurant. Time for lunch. Wow. Ciao. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Buffet de Pepe has been around since 1897. And while it's owned and run by an Italian family, it serves only traditional Hungarian and Austrian dishes. The owner's son, Andrea Polo, joins us for lunch. So, Andrea, we're in the middle of Trieste. Where's the pasta? Where is the pasta? <laughs> there isn't pasta here. This is a traditional place for pork boil. Okay. Uh, 
our users to make the mixed plate like this in the middle. You can share with some sauerkraut, potatoes on the side. It's very typical here. Huh? It's Easter place for Trieste. Okay, it, but typical for here. Yeah. I mean, sauerkraut. It's yeah. funny. Yeah, it's funny because in 1897, uh, it was the Austria government here, and this is so traditional. Is this food your favorite too? Yes, yes, but every day is difficult. It is every day, but it's so amazing. I, I on, in the morning I wake up, I come here, and I eat the sandwich with this one. It's amazing. So we finished with our lunch, and our sightseeing tour continues with the Grand Canal. So I heard this area has given Trieste the nickname Venice's little sister. <laughs> Maybe, but uh, it has nothing to do with Venice. This is the Grand Canal, uh, but we don't have any gondolas. And it was built by the command of Maria Theresia of Austria, the Empress. Uh, it was a part of uh, the seaport of Trieste. It was very important for the commerce. One thing that stands out here is a statue of a famous Irish writer. And here we have a famous author, James Joyce. Yes, hi James. <laughs> James Joyce lived here in Trieste 11 years when he was young. And here he began to write his masterpiece, Ulysses. And here he wrote uh, Dubliners too. Okay. He lived here in Trieste because he worked uh, as English teacher at the Berlitz School. I guess most people would think that James Joyce wrote the Dubliners in Dublin, but he didn't. He wrote it in Trieste. <laughs> Not far from the Grand Canal is the pastry shop Bomboniera, which is a good place to escape the 37 degree heat. So here we have a mix of the different traditions that uh, met here in this territory. For example, we have uh, here the Esterhazy. Yeah. The, the, this is a typical Hungarian cake. Okay. Then we have the Gibanitsa. This is Slovenian cake. Then you have the Linzer Torte. This mm -hmm. is an Austrian cake. Okay. And Presnitz here. This is Triestin, typical okay. cake. So we have quite a representation here. <laughs> The cakes are not expensive, with an average price of three euros. We try the Presnitz okay. cake, which has fruit, nuts, and chocolate in it. Mm. It's very sweet. Mm -hmm. Our final stop for the day is the Miramare Castle. It was built for Archduke Ferdinand Maximilian of Habsburg. He lived here for four years with his wife Charlotte of Belgium. So we are now at Miramar Castle, or Miramare, which isn't exactly in the center of Trieste. No, but uh, 10 minutes by car mm -hmm. from city center and you can reach Miramare. And the park is free, you can enter the park for free, and it's in front of the sea. So really nice. Another reason to come here. Unlike other Italian cities, Trieste is not overrun by tourists, so you don't have to rush when you take in the sights. So, ciao from Miramare. I think I chose the hottest day of the year to visit Trieste, so if you're sensitive to heat, you might want to wait till the spring or the fall. But Trieste is relatively inexpensive and it's extremely easy to get around, so it's worth a visit even if you only have one day.